But uh, yeah, temporary autonomous zones and permanent uh, autonomous zones. Let's go ahead and define those terms uh, real quick, and then we'll uh, you know discuss whether they're uh, Vani or not. Right. So the idea here is that I guess you could basically say that when people gather together to engage in certain activities, they need to be able to do so in a way that doesn't have a lot of risk of being interfered with by the state or even put under even surveillance even, uh, the surveillance police state apparatus in particular, right? So the temporary autonomous zones are essentially mobile ones. So much like the affinity groups and freedom cells would be very amorphous in, in, their, in how their relationships work, the, the TAS are very similar in that it's it's very mobile, right? So uh, just because a bunch of people, for example, uh, got together and uh, performed some sort of activity of one kind or another uh, in a certain location does not therefore mean that particular geographic location should always be used for that particular activity that they like engaging in, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it may need to be done like five miles away next week or maybe uh, 200 miles away, you know, in, in a couple days or whatever, right? I mean, regardless of those specific details, the main idea behind a TAS is that uh, due to mobility, which I think Rayo mentioned uh, earlier on in, in the Vanu book. Yeah, yeah, cru yeah crucial, to him, crucial to him. Uh, mobility was crucial. Is that's, that's kind of the main idea with TAS. So, like, for example, if we get together tonight with, like, 50 people and we have a rave, uh, and let's just say uh, some people prefer to be more psychedelic than others, and I'll just leave it at that, then fine. Uh, but as long as, you know, the event was put on and there was a minimum, and presumably it was kept within good security culture was practiced, and there was a minimum amount of, of uh, outsider people who were not invited to the party. Uh, and, and it's also the, the specific location, right? Obviously, you don't want to do it in a suburban area, right? Because, you know, some old fuddy-duddy might call the cops, right? And make you vulnerable to coercion, right? That, that's kind of the problem there. But if you were to say do it in an industrial park or or some sort of abandoned garage or some other location where you know you could you could pretty much pull it off, as long as your your communications were good and you didn't you know invite anybody you shouldn't have, and of course preferably you would also have some people not necessarily engaging in the certain activities that evening, but perhaps were themselves uh, performing the function of bouncers or or otherwise on-site security personnel to make sure. That everything was pretty okay then then you're good and then of course when you do your next rave party or whatever don't do it at the same spot you did it before right because the state relies upon stuff like that so yeah. for example a good example of what's not a taz would be something like a nightclub right because a nightclub has to be at a specific location right and they have to be licensed by the state and so forth with the business licenses and such and liquor licenses right Yep, so, yep, yep, yep. So the idea is that these these um, these zones, these these tasks specifically, have to be mobile. And then, yeah, even if they put on a one-time event, it wouldn't always be in the same place because again, the mobility is important as well as uh, secure communications and and some degree of vetting and you know bouncers even. So I mean, if you do it right and you know market cooperation works, you can put on you know and do all sorts of things that you would never get away with <laughs> in a nightclub. Which uh, is obviously uh, something I'm not going to repeat here because I want to keep this family friendly as much as possible. <laughs> but suffice it to say, I mean, you can get away with a lot if if there is good security involved. It'd be a very prof profitable venture as well. But uh, interesting example there. But yeah, you're, you're yeah you're you're right. Uh, you're definitely well, right. Mosh pits even in in some circumstances, right? But uh, but yeah, the the idea is that it's whether it's an event or it's some other specific function or whatever, as long as it's mobile, it's, well, as the T in TAS says, it's temporary, you, you can do quite a bit. And so, by comparison, the, the, the PAS, or permanent autonomous zone, is just a, a more stable version of it. But again, that's getting into more what Rayo called, like, free ports and stuff more along those lines, which, of course, introduce other factors and are, I personally think, are a lot harder to pull off. And I think Rayo even recognized that. Well, yeah, that was that was that's kind of why he, you know, uh, went off in his uh, uh, in his uh, camper uh, on on his pickup truck uh, was initially because of those uh, failed free aisles projects. It really never came to fruition. He said, "Screw it, I'm not waiting around. I'm going to take my my life and my freedom in my own hands." And that's uh, that was kind of the the, the result was Vanu. Uh, now, do they have potential? Uh, nowadays, we'll definitely get into that in uh, more podcasts, and you're you're going to want to continue listening uh, every every single week. <laughs> Hey, it's Jane here, one of the hosts of the Vanu Podcast. If this excerpt intrigued you, or you think you might be interested in the subject matter, 
come give us a listen. We release podcasts every Tuesday, and you can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and Google Play. Just search for The Vonnie Podcast and find us at vonniepodcast.com.